When it comes to games to learn Japanese with, Pokemon is often at the very top of many people's lists for games they want to try to play. The series has many things about it that make the game very approachable for language learners. But I've always wondered which game is the very best game to learn Japanese with, and that's exactly what we're going to be finding out today in this video. I've gone through the first hour in all of the main titles in the Pokemon series, and I've collected all of the text that you approach in the first hour, and I've analysed all of that data so that we can see very clearly what games are very approachable for beginners, what games are a little bit more challenging, and which games are the hardest to play, as well as a breakdown of all of the different levels of kanji that appear in the games. I'll be going through the series in the order in which the games were released, so if you want to check out a particular game, feel free to use the timestamps to check out the game that you're most interested. And then at the end of the video, we're going to go through all of the data so we can see exactly which Pokemon ranks in the most difficult to the most easiest. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video and find out exactly which Pokemon game is the best for Japanese learners. So first up on the list, we have Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow. These are the very original games and the games that I grew up with myself playing. I remember being absolutely addicted to Pokemon Blue, just playing it all day every day on the Game Boy and I'd always harass my parents to try and get new AA batteries to fit in the back. My life completely revolved around searching for AA batteries. And so the first thing I'm sure you're noticing straight away is this font. So for me personally, I actually don't find the font too difficult to read, but I do remember when I first started learning Japanese, I do remember trying to read this and I was like, what the hell, this is impossible. <laughs> I remember feeling that way. So if you feel that way yourself, don't feel bad at all. It does take a little bit getting used to, especially if you've never really seen any other font other than kind of the beginner writing style, the kind of traditional font, right? Seeing the characters written in just a slightly different way can often throw you off, so it's very, very common. I would say though that you do pick it up relatively quickly, so it's not too much of a hurdle, but I can see it being a hurdle in the beginning, especially for beginners. Another challenge, although this perhaps is something that may be a bonus to you depending on where you're looking from, is this game is completely in hiragana. Kanji isn't used in the Pokemon games until later in the series on the DS. And so this game is completely in hiragana, and that can be both a huge positive for you if perhaps you're too intimidated by kanji, but it can also be quite challenging because sometimes you can't tell what a word means and kanji really helps make sure that you're reading the right word. Because in Japanese, there's a lot of words that are written exactly the same, but they mean something completely different. Having kanji can often alleviate that stress of not knowing which word it is. Another thing that's really nice about Pokemon games, particularly these earlier ones, as you can see, the text is actually spaced very, very cleanly between different parts of the sentence. And so this can really help you break down the sentence if you're aware of the system that they use. Often the very last character, this is just used to show the relationship of that noun to the rest of the sentence. Like for example, the what particle showing what you're talking about, what you're about to add information about, the debt particle showing where you do an action, the gut particle showing what does an action or what is in a certain state, and also sometimes ending with verbs in different conjugations. However, this isn't always true. Not every noun has to have a particle afterwards, but it's just very common, so you can kind of see a trend here. Now, these games were released for the Game Boy. However, you can also play them on the 3DS if you got them from the virtual console. Unfortunately, the Nintendo 3DS eShop is now closed, so you can no longer get those games, but you can actually buy a 3DS that has the games already installed, although I'm sure they'll be quite expensive. And in order to play this game in Japanese, you need to have a Japanese copy of the game, so just be careful about that. The Pokedex in these series of games are very straightforward and simple and quite readable really. I like how clear it is with the white background and the black text. It's very, very easy to read. At least I personally find this quite comfortable to read. Although if there were kanji, I'd personally appreciate that a lot. But I can see the benefits for Japanese learners here being written in hiragana. It definitely makes it quite approachable without being too fearful of kanji. If you want a bit more of an in-depth comparison of the text in all the Pokemon games, I will have a section near the end of this video where I'll actually compare all of the different games and their fonts so you can see which one is the most readable for yourself. And so the first hour of this game is pretty straightforward. You have an introduction where you get introduced to the world of Pokemon. You have a short conversation with your mom and the professor, as well as your rival. You get to choose your first Pokemon, have a battle with your rival, do a quick little errand, and then you unlock the Pokedex. And so from this moment onwards, the kind of game begins and you can pretty much do whatever you want to do, whether you want to catch certain Pokemon and try and maybe collect all of the ones in the region. Maybe you want to level up your Pokemon, or perhaps you just want to talk to all the NPCs and get lots of dialogue or you want to try and see if you can rush straight to the gym. So what I mean by when the game begins is when you really get to this point. The point where you really start to be able to actually play the game, catch Pokemon and have fun. And kind of grade how much language you want to see as you go. 
obviously there'll be some cutscenes you can't avoid, but for the most part the game's opened up. And so as I was going through and playing this game, I also recorded how long it took to get the first Pokemon, as well as for the game to kind of begin once you get access to the Pokedex and Pokeballs, once you can really start playing the game. Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow took about 10 minutes to get your first Pokemon, and about 15 minutes to get started playing. Which is pretty close to the fastest time in the whole Pokemon series, however surprisingly there is actually a game on this list that beats the time. Now one thing you do need to be careful of is Pokemon games often have a tendency to not show you the entire finish sentence, often because they're trying to fit it on two lines even if it's a three line or a four line sentence. What that means is sometimes you'll be looking at the text and you'll think that's the end of the sentence and you'll be like, that doesn't make sense, but actually it's only half of a sentence and you need to press B to continue to see the next part of the sentence. But by that time, you can't now re-look back at the other part of the sentence to kind of look at it all as a complete picture. And that can get a little bit frustrating for a language learner. And that's why I really recommend playing with OCR so you can have the text immediately kind of extracted so you can access it with close to 99% accuracy or with the game script. However, I believe there's not too many game scripts around for Pokemon games as they're mostly just text dumps which make really difficult to navigate. So I highly recommend OCR like Kamui OCR or Yomi Ninja. Another really great thing about playing Pokemon games in Japanese to help you learn the language is you can kind of, except for in the intro, you can kind of choose how difficult you want the gameplay experience to be. If you want the max exposure to the Japanese language, make sure to talk to every single NPC. But if you want more gameplay, just go and grind some Pokemon and have fun with team building. If you've still talked to every NPC and you want even more and perhaps you want some connection with the Pokemon, make sure to read every Pokedex as you catch every Pokemon. It kind of adds to the challenge, like let's complete the Pokedex, not just to catch them all, but also to read every Pokedex entry in Japanese. The difficulty level is pretty adjustable really, depending on what you want. Obviously there are parts where there is just text and you can't really avoid that, but if you really wanted you could always just skip past the text if you wanted just like you may have done in English. <laughs> so it's very very kind of gradable based on your own needs and wants. So the Pokemon series really is a fun one to play in Japanese. Next we have Gold, Silver and Crystal. And these games mostly have the exact same points as Red, Blue and Yellow, as these are the next generation of games that was made for the Game Boy Color. And so obviously one big bonus of these games is they are in color. You can play the originals in colour as well, although they're not that way on the 3DS when you play it through the Virtual Console. Gold, Silver and Crystal, however, are. And so just like the previous generation, these games only have hiragana, there are no kanji at all in the game. And just like the previous generations, you need to have the Japanese version of these games in order to play them in Japanese. Now Gold, Silver and Crystal are actually a little bit more difficult than the first three. The intro is a little bit longer and there is a little bit more text. Again, this is just for the first hour, however, once you kind of get into the flow of the game, it's kind of a similar pace. You have an introduction to the world, you have a quick conversation with your mum, you meet the professor and your rival. You do a quick little errand, although these versions of the games do take a little bit longer than Red, Blue and Yellow. Once you've finished your errand, you then have to walk all the way back. This is a little bit time consuming and you still don't have Pokeballs, so you can't catch any of the Pokemon you come across. And then finally, when you return back, you finally get your Pokeballs and then the game begins. So the opening for Gold, Silver and Crystal is definitely longer than Red, Blue and Yellow. But after the intro, most Pokemon games are very similar. You can kind of just take it at your own pace. The Pokedex is a little bit different this time around. As you can see, we now have a black background with white text and mostly the same font. However, I do feel like this Pokedex is a little bit more difficult to read than the original because of this difference in contrast. Maybe it's just myself, but I do find the font here in this Pokedex a little bit more difficult than the original three games. So really, if you're looking for a very classic Pokemon experience, red, blue, yellow, gold, silver, or crystal are all really good picks. Although personally, I would go maybe blue, yellow, or crystal. I have very fond memories of gold and silver in particular, as I remember when I was in primary school, I think, a very little kid, and everyone was really hype about red and blue and yellow. And I remember searching the internet and I actually found out news of gold and silver in Japanese. And at that time I thought it was fake, but it turned out to actually be true. It was a very exciting time, those early days of the internet, so these games will always have a very special place in my heart, even though these games aren't necessarily the most recommended game for beginners of Japanese. Although they certainly are if you just want to play the game without any kanji. Next we have Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald for the Game Boy Advance. Now these games are just incredible, particularly Emerald is such a special gem and I would probably put it down as one of my favourite games in the series. It is so lovely, I love it so much. I really like the character, probably my favourite character in the whole series. I love the way he looks in Emerald. Great 
soundtrack, really good artwork. I love the sprites in Pokemon Emerald. They look so good. I love the land and the Pokemon. Some of my favorite Pokemon in the whole series are in this game. And this game really is one of the best. Unfortunately, it's very expensive if you're looking at getting this as a collector. It's quite difficult to get a legit copy of Pokemon Emerald nowadays. So good luck if you're trying to find this game yourself. It's, it's a really tough one to get. Although one benefit of playing in Japanese is it is actually quite easier to get a lot of these games in Japanese than it is to actually get the English counterparts. There's a really strong secondhand market in Japan, although it will still be quite expensive, but I would say it's definitely a lot more cheaper than it is if you're playing in English. So there's a benefit if you play in Japanese, you can probably get the games a little bit more cheaper, although they're still going to be pretty expensive. And so Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald also only have hiragana for the text, there are no kanji, and you need to buy the Japanese version of the game if you want to get access to the Japanese language. Now the text in this version of the game is a little bit hit and miss. I'm not sure whether it's more or less difficult than the Game Boy games. You be the judge. Some characters are a little bit difficult to read, but others are a little bit easier. I will say, however, it's very, very pretty, and I really do love these games. Even if the font is still a little bit difficult to read, I really enjoy looking at it anyway. Now, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald took me 10 minutes to get the first Pokemon, and about 20 minutes to get started playing the game. So it's kind of in the middle between red and blue and gold and silver in how long it took to actually get started playing. The intro of this game is pretty similar. You have a conversation with your mum, you rescue the professor this time, and you pick your starter Pokemon, you do some stuff with your rival, you have a battle, come back, and you get your Pokedex and some Pokeballs this time, as well as your running shoes you can actually run around, which is a very, very welcome addition to the game. And then from that point on, the game begins. However, in terms of overall enjoyment, I would say this is the best so far for me. I was just having an absolute ball playing this game and I actually really wanted to play more. And in terms of overall language and game balance, it's very similar to Gold, Silver and Crystal, as well as very similar in the overall difficulty level. So it's quite similar in experience in terms of language wise, although I did find myself having a lot more enjoyable time with this game, maybe just because it looks so pretty and I just really love the region. And it does seem the language is a little bit easier than Gold, Silver and Crystal. The Pokedex is a little bit tricky. It's really beautiful. I love the colors. I love the look. I love the design. It looks really good. But the text is a little bit pushed together a little bit. You can see the clear separation of where the words are, but the actual text itself is quite close together. So if you're a complete beginner at Japanese, perhaps it might still be a little bit difficult to read. Some of them don't follow the, the normal stroke order that you would be used to, as you can see like this mu. It's very difficult to actually see the strokes. It just looks like one big like arm almost. <laughs> Certainly not impossible, an amazing game, but the text is still just a little bit challenging here with the Game Boy Advance. But man, what a pretty game. Next we have Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green for the Game Boy Advance, and these are remakes of the very original Red and Green. It was actually released as green in Japan, not blue. Blue in Japan was actually a kind of a updated version. So there was the original Red and Green, then there was an updated blue, but when they finally released it to the international market, they just released it as red and blue. So that's why these games are known as Fire Red and Leaf Green, because it's connected to the very original Japanese releases. And so these games are very similar to the experience of Red, Blue and Green, just a lot more prettier. That being said, however, there is actually a lot more text in this first hour for these games than there are in the original, and that's because they kind of had this wave of trying to teach the player how to play the game. Whereas they never did that in the original games, they pretty much just had one old guy say, this is how you catch a Pokemon, and then that that's it. Whereas they start to introduce these more elements to try and help people who are new to Pokemon teach them how to play the game. So there's some of that explanation at the beginning of the game that made these two games a little bit more text heavy in the beginning. That being said though, these two games were actually the quickest of all games in the entire series to get straight to the gameplay. This took me 7 minutes to get my first Pokemon and 10 minutes to get my Pokedex. I made sure that the sentences stayed on the screen as long as it took to read it. So it does seem that these are actually faster than the originals to get to the gameplay. Now personally I think the text in the Pokedex here is just perfect. You have a light background with dark text. I think this is very very readable, at least for the Game Boy Advance. I also really like the contrast here they have with the dark blue background and the white as well. I also find this quite easy to read. Again though, if you're a complete beginner, I understand if you find this a little bit challenging, so don't feel too bad. You certainly will get used to it quite fast, but if you do find it a little bit challenging, I recommend checking out more of the recent games like on the 3DS and the Nintendo Switch. These are definitely some of the most beloved Pokemon games for sure, and I can definitely see why. If you get an itch for some red and blue, but you want it to just look a little bit better, these are the games to go for. Now, these games from the Game Boy Advance, you can also play technically through a GameCube 
GameCube if you have a special adapter. So if you have a GameCube lying around, you can actually play the GBA games through your GameCube. All you need is an adapter to connect the systems. So that's pretty cool. That means you can play these games on your TV if you have a GameCube. And actually you could do that with the original ones from Game Boy as well, I believe with the Super Game Boy uh, and like a Super Nintendo, you could do the same thing as well. Realistically, if you feel like you wanna play the original red and blue or red and green in Japanese, I'd probably recommend just playing these remakes instead as they're mostly a much more improved experience. I certainly have a lot more fun with them with the revamped Pokemon moves that they learn at different levels and stuff. It just, you have more access to types earlier on and it's just a really fun experience. Also, it just looks so beautiful with this sprite work. Okay, moving on to the Nintendo DS era. And now we're looking at Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. These are some of the last games to only have hiragana available, so there's no kanji in these games whatsoever. Now, you can play DS games both on the Nintendo DS as well as on the Nintendo 3DS. That makes these games pretty accessible nowadays that it's not too difficult to get your hands on the parts. In fact, I still have several DS consoles uh, just lying around. I think I've got two 3DS lying around and two DS lying around, I still have them. So, so definitely two handhelds that aren't too difficult to still get your hands on. So these games are still very approachable for anyone who's wanting to play them as you can just play them on the 3DS. Now, like the previous games, you can only play these in Japanese on the Japanese copy of the game. So make sure that you have a Japanese copy of the game. And I believe the Japanese copy of the DS, although I'm not sure about region locking. So make sure you look into that before you buy anything. I just have a Japanese DS, so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> now, surprisingly, Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum had the longest intro of all of the games so far. It took me 13 minutes to get my first Pokemon and half an hour to get the actual game started once I finally got my Pokedex and some Pokeballs and actually start really playing. These games really do unfortunately have a long intro, at least for the earlier games. You have the intro as well as now a conversation in your room with your rival. You talk with your mum and then even more conversation with your rival. Finally, you decide to go out in the fields because you can't find the professor. Then the professor arrives, stops you, and gives you a choice of three Pokemon. After a short battle, a little bit of gameplay, then you have even more dialogue. So you talk to your friend or your rival again, and then you have to talk back to your mum, and now you have to go to the lake, and there's just so much dialogue in the beginning of this game. You finally get your Pokedex from the professor, but still you're not ready to actually play. You have to get introduced to the Pokemon Center, the Pokemon Mart, and now finally you can get some Pokeballs and actually start catching Pokemon, but you're still not ready yet to play. You have to go all the way back to the first town, talk with your mum, go back to the previous town, get taught how to catch Pokemon, and then finally the game actually kind of begins. Sure, you can kind of catch Pokemon a little bit on the way there, but there's not too many interesting Pokemon. As you can see, it's pretty dry in terms of opening, and it does take longer than the other games. Just remember though, this is only talking about the first hour, as most Pokemon games do tend to open up as you kind of play more and more, but the opening experience is probably gonna be the biggest hurdle for a Japanese learner. However, as you can see, the text is a lot more readable. In fact, I think from here on out, the text itself, really, you're not gonna have too much problem with reading. Sure, it does get a little bit higher definition, but I think most of the shapes are very similar to how the shapes would be if you typed out the letters yourself. So I would recommend the DS games onward if you're having a little bit difficulty reading the text in the earlier games. Now, the Pokedex certainly isn't too bad, but I do still kind of feel that the, the actual letters themselves, the characters, are a little bit jammed together. And you can't really tell if you're a complete beginner where the line actually begins and ends. Like, for example, here with this electric Pokemon, with the first Karada. The, the line from the cut almost looks connected to the ra. It's very, very, very close together. And if you're a beginner, that could potentially cause some problems. That's a very personal thing. It depends on you, however. But I do see that the text here is a little bit cramped here in the Pokedex. And actually, Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum are actually the most difficult games for a Japanese language learner on the systems so far. From Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, and DS, this is probably the most difficult because there's just so much dialogue in the beginning. Not that this is a bad thing, if you want dialogue, that's great, but it does take a little bit more time to get into it. So if you're looking for a game that's a little bit more quicker to get into the actual gameplay, some of the earlier games might be better picks. In terms of the overall experience, it's still the great Pokemon games. They still have the space text everywhere, so it's still very readable, especially once you learn about the particles and how they often end in the sentences so you don't have to look up the whole thing. Although it's often very recommended just look up the whole sentence anyway, because often things like Yomitan can just automatically pass it for you. Now I've got to say, Pokemon Platinum is a very fun game, and I remember having great memories going through the whole game and just playing fun, especially Pokemon Platinum is just a really, really good one. But the first hour was actually the driest experience of all the games so far. 
there's not too many Pokemon types. It takes a long time to get in. And even I myself found myself kind of going, hurry up, get to it. 30 minutes is a long time. And if you're a complete beginner, that means it could take you many hours to actually get started really playing the game. No shades on Pokemon Platinum or anything, but just the fact is, is that there is a lot more text in these games. So just keep that in mind. Next, we have some of the best games in the entire series, Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. My god, this is really the pinnacle. I love these games so much. I think they're the first and only Pokemon games that allow you to have your Pokemon follow behind you. How cool is that? <laughs> so your favorite Pokemon you can always just have walking behind you. Ah, oh, it's just so wonderful. These games are the remakes of Pokemon Gold and Silver. And the really good thing about this is that these games are really just a much better experience experience of Pokemon Gold and Silver. So beautiful, so fun, great everything, big thumbs up, love these games so much. Very, very fun time. I love the way the game looks, I love the way the game plays. Overall, fantastic experiences, really enjoyed these games. Now in terms of time that it took to get into the gameplay, it was almost exactly the same as Gold, Silver and Crystal. It took 10 minutes to get your first Pokemon and about 25 minutes to get started playing. Now, Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver do have a little bit more text than the originals in the opening. However, with the wonderfulness of the colors, the adorableness of your Pokemon following behind you. Oh my God, I love that so much. I wish they kept doing this for every single game. It is such a cool feature. You don't really feel like it's taking too long with the additional dialogue from the previous games. You also get some running shoes. You don't have to slow walk everywhere. Ah, it's just fantastic. And so in the first hour, I wasn't able to defeat the first gym, but I did make it to the entrance of the Bellsprout Tower. I was actually having a lot of fun with this game, even though it was pretty much the exact same experience as Gold and Silver and Crystal. I just had so much more fun playing Playing these ones. I really highly recommend these games. They're so awesome. These games also have a really cool additional dialogue option, which was true in the original Gold and Silver as well. And you actually have a kind of phone that you can call up people. And in this game, you can also use to re-challenge trainers that you previously beat. And so that's really cool. So you can call a whole bunch of different people and get a whole different chance to kind of get some dialogue that you can read. The font in this game is still very similar to the previous Pokemon Platinum, so very readable. And the Pokedex, I feel, is a little bit of an upgrade, maybe? It's probably the same, but I think because of the contrast with the white background and the black text, I find it a lot more readable. Also, I really love the design of this Pokedex, so I just think it's just much more enjoyable to look at. Such amazing games, probably my favorite games in the DS. Really love Hard Gold and Soul Silver. Next up, Pokemon Black and White for the Nintendo DS. And this is kind of the new generation for Pokemon games. It was almost kind of a reboot of the Pokemon series. And this is the first games in the Pokemon series to have Kanji. You can choose whether to play this game fully in Hiragana like always, or you can have Kanji if you would like, and something that I very recommend. Really helps to actually kind of read everything once you have Kanji in a sentence. So Pokemon Black and White do have a little bit of a longer intro here, as you now have two rivals, kind of, uh, that has a lot of dialogue with them talking, you kind of mess up your room a little bit, and you kind of have this whole going on a journey together vibe. So there is some added dialogue here. It does take a little bit longer to get into the game. However, they do throw your Pokemon right at you. So you get to pick your Pokemon even from your own house. These games were so close to getting to the top of the list for straight to gameplay. Pokemon Black and White took seven minutes to get your first Pokemon and 17 minutes to get the game started. The text is also very readable for the Nintendo DS. However, this is the first game that has kanji. And as you can see, it was a bit of a shaky start. Trying to force Kanji into a Nintendo DS game, uh, obviously is a bit of a challenge with the lower resolution. And as you can see, some of the Kanji can tend to be a little bit difficult to read. It can be quite a bit of a challenge, especially for beginners. Oh my God, like look at the stroke order of that. Like what? If I didn't know what it was, I don't know if I could like hand draw that into an actual dictionary. So yay kanji, but also yay kanji. <laughs> I think it's more just as a little bit difficult to read, but I am really appreciative that there is kanji in this game. I personally think that kanji is much easier to read than hiragana, but again, for beginners, I understand that that's a bit more of a challenge. But good news is you can choose whether to play in hiragana or kanji. And in fact, you can even toggle in the game whether you want to choose to play the game currently in hiragana or kanji. Just go to the options menu and change the settings. I would say 
in general, this game has a little bit more dialogue than the previous games as well, as you actually have a phone that often rings and you kind of have group chats and stuff, kind of seeing the future there with Zoom or something. Um, but this kind of group chat thing does give you a little bit more extra dialogue as you play, which is actually quite welcome and quite nice because as you're just kind of grinding and having fun playing Pokemon, you get, oh, let's, let's have some dialogue to read. This game is also more dialogue heavy as there is actually kind of a little bit more of a narrative thrown straight at the beginning with this group that's wanting to actually kind of release all Pokemon. It's kind of the opposite of Team Rocket trying to steal all the Pokemon. These guys are trying to release them all and you have a little bit more story here. This is one of the first Pokemon to kind of have a bit more of an actual narrative to the overall story. I really like the design of the Pokedex and I really like the attempts at implementing Kanji, although look at Zukan. <laughs> That's very difficult to read. Um, it's great that there's kanji, but don't feel too bad if it's too much for you. It almost feels like Pokemon Black and White is probably better for a more advanced learner, someone who's not seeing these kanji for the first time. If you're familiar with the word, you're going to be able to read it, but if this is your first time seeing the word, it's going to be a bit difficult to look it up without the help of OCR. Pokemon Black and White Two are the sequels to Black and White, and they're exactly the same in terms of language options where they have hiragana and kanji, but it's just the sequel to the original games. Now, these games you need to buy the Japanese version, but they're actually the last games in the whole Pokemon series that you need to buy the Japanese version in order to get access to the Japanese language. And Black and White 2 is actually even quicker to the gameplay with seven minutes to get your first Pokemon and only 14 minutes to get the gameplay started. Now, Pokemon Black and White actually has the most amount of text that we've seen in the series so far. However, Pokemon Black and White 2 is actually a lot quicker to the point, and it's about the same amount of text as Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver. So Pokemon Black and White does take a little bit more time to actually get into the gameplay. There's a little bit more story. In fact, the most story we've seen so far. But Pokemon Black and White 2 are really quick on the gameplay. They're just throwing your Pokemon at you with throwing the Pokedex here, quickly, quickly, get playing. Um, so they definitely kind of improved with the sequel. That being said, though, still definitely play these games in order as they are a sequel to the original Black and White. Next we have Pokemon X and Y for the Nintendo 3DS. Now I actually missed these games the first time around when they came out, however I have actually bought them second hand and they're actually really good games, quite surprising. I think these are probably the most underrated Pokemon games of the whole series. I think these games deserve a lot more love than they get. There's some incredible gameplay things that are added. And overall, they're actually really fun experiences and also some of the easiest Pokemon games to play for a Japanese language learner. Now, these games are on the Nintendo 3DS. However, one amazing thing about this and the series going forward is you actually don't have to import a Japanese version of this game. You can buy this game in any region and you can choose the Japanese language. All regions have Japanese text option. And this is true for all games going forward. So that's absolutely incredible. You don't have to import a Japanese version of this game if you don't want to. You also get the choice between whether you want to play the game in hiragana only or have kanji, so you can kind of grade that as well. The text now is a lot more readable, in particular the kanji. Thanks to the 3DS with its improved resolution over the DS, kanji are now a lot more readable, and I would say realistically you're not going to have too much problem being able to read these kanji. You're definitely not going to have as much trouble as you may have on the Nintendo DS with that kind of crammed kanji, where you almost can't even see See what the kanji is unless you're familiar with the word. Here the kanji look incredibly like what they would if you type them on a computer. So now we can be happy about kanji! Yay kanji! In terms of the overall ratio between gameplay and text, this is the only other game on the list that is similar to the very original red, blue and yellow. They're very similar in the amount of text you actually have, which is quite surprising because it feels like there's quite a lot of text with the intro. It feels a bit longer, but it's actually not. There's a lot more gameplay than text in this in the first hour anyway. And I was having a blast. These are really great entries in the series. And so Pokemon X and Y do actually get to the gameplay quite quickly. 10 minutes to get your first Pokemon and 18 minutes to get your Pokedex and your Pokeballs and get started playing. That's pretty quick. And so the opening experience of Pokemon X and Y is some of the fastest in the entire series. It's so quick. I love it so much. You just meet your friends. They give you your Pokemon and your Pokedex and you're off on your journey. It's just straight to the point, really quick, really great. And I just had so much fun. It was quite difficult for me to put this down after the first hour as I was coming across all these really interesting Pokemon and I just wanted to keep going. For beginners, this is incredible because that means you don't have a mountain of dialogue you have to go through before you can actually start enjoying the game. You get to choose how much dialogue you want, whether you want to read all the Pokedexes, whether you want to talk to all the NPCs, whether you want to do all of that. If you don't want to do some reading right now and you just want a little bit of a break, you could just enjoy playing the game and then you can choose when you want to read. That makes this game incredibly good for beginners as well as its difficulty being overall lower than other Pokemon games 
games, this makes it a very highly recommended game for a beginner of Japanese. I will say Pokemon X and Y's Pokedex isn't quite as pretty as the other games, I don't like it quite as much, but they were very fun for the first hour. Incredible gameplay to text ratio, just like Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow, really good stuff. And in fact, there's only one more game on this list that gets the gameplay quicker than this game. And so Pokemon X and Y are also really great starting points if you're wanting to get into the series as they're available on the 3DS and you don't need to import any Japanese copy. This game was an absolute treat, very readable font, very enjoyable experience, great kanji, nice easy language, very enjoyable gameplay, overall really really good time. Next up we have Pokemon Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby for the Nintendo 3DS. God I love these games. <laughs> as I said before, I really love Pokemon Emerald, I love the vibes, I love the Pokemon, I love everything, the scene, everything. Thing. even if there's too much water, fantastic, really love Emerald. And this is the next generation remix of Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. And so just like every other game from here on out, you can access the Japanese language even if you didn't buy the Japanese version of the game. You can choose between Hiragana or Kanji. Now gameplay to text ratio is pretty decent, it's 10 minutes to get your first Pokemon, 20 minutes to get the game started. But I really gotta say, I was having a blast playing this game, and there's some really cool gameplay elements that were introduced in this game like you can actually track the map and try and see if there's a Pokemon you're missing you can even come across like strengthened versions of Pokemon hiding in the grass like I found a special version of Poochina that had Ice Fang to start off with or even Lotad with Confusion so you could do like drain builds with Confusion oh, I was just so much fun so creative I have heard there's a little bit of balancing issues with this game later on because it, you get so many options but if you're just wanting to have fun playing Pokemon I can't recommend this game enough it's just such a fun time. Now in terms of text to gameplay ratio it's almost exactly the same as Pokemon Emerald as the story is pretty much exactly the same and there's not too many extra story things added. There is a little bit here and there but it's mostly the same thing. However just a little bit more text. And so as you can see, Pokemon Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby have very readable text. The kanji is not too difficult to read at all, and it's better than the DS games. And, and overall, it's a really enjoyable experience. The gameplay is great. The Japanese is nice and clear. It still has the spaces so you can see the kind of parts of the sentence. But now with kanji, as well as in higher definition, it's just a really great experience. I'm a very big fan of the Pokedex. It's very nice and easy to read, being on the top screen of the DS and just overall really cool design. Just really good games. If you just wanted to sit back, enjoy some Pokemon and enjoy immersing in some Japanese, highly, highly, highly recommend Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Big love heart for these games. And now we have the final two 3DS games, Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon, as well as Pokemon Ultra Moon and Ultra Sun. These are very similar experiences, Pokemon Moon and Pokemon Ultra Moon, Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Ultra Sun. The story is slightly changed, but is very, 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 very similar. The gameplay, most of it's very similar, but it's just a more of an enhanced version of the original. And so these games, just like before, you can play Japanese on any version of the game and they have hiragana or kanji optional. And these games are the beginning of a trend for the Pokemon games where they try and get a little bit more storytelling, they try and be a little bit more cinematic, they try and get a little bit more involved and there's a lot more text. And because of this, these games have been quite divisive for Pokemon fans. This game does feel very hand-holdy at times. That being said though, the intro of these games are some of the longest in the series. You have a huge dialogue at your home with your mum and a Meowth. Then the professor rocks up and you have heaps of dialogue with him. Even more dialogue as the professor shows you around town. You come across this mysterious character with this mysterious Pokemon. You get cutscenes and even more dialogue. Then you have to save her, bring her back to the town, get your starter Pokemon and finally you get a Pokemon. You finally get introduced to your rival, have a short battle, even more dialogue. And then the game finally begins after a little bit more introductory text. That being said though, these games still aren't even begun because you're not really open, you actually have to kind of follow even more hand-holding with new introduction of the Z-Power system and, and then being introduced to the kind of gyms in these games which is quite different. Even after the first hour, I hadn't really felt like I'd really kind of opened up the game and begun like I feel like in other Pokemon games when you get the Pokedex. Pokemon Sun and Moon takes 22 minutes to get your first Pokemon and 32 minutes to get started actually playing with Pokedexes and Pokeballs. A very long time. 
almost the longest game in the Pokemon series to actually get started. However, I must say it's still pretty entertaining. Even though it's slow, it's not boring. I found myself with, for example, Pokemon Platinum. I just really wanted to get into the game. And then when I finally did, the Pokemon choices weren't very varied and stuff. And it was just kind of a mm, first hour. I didn't really enjoy it, but I was actually enjoying Pokemon Sun and Moon quite a lot. It's very cinematic and that's kind of a first for the Pokemon series. And it's quite enjoyable. There's some really interesting Pokemon. You get some, still get some battles and stuff. You get to see lots of characters. So it was slow, but entertaining. Overall, in terms of text to gameplay ratio, it's very similar to Pokemon Platinum. It's actually a little bit less surprisingly. It just takes a little bit longer to actually get into the gameplay. That being said though, the overall Japanese is actually a little bit lower level than some of the harder games in the series. So even though there's a lot of text, it's not necessarily the hardest games. If you're wanting a very hand-holdy cinematic experience, then Pokemon Sun and Moon will be the games for you to go for, or Ultra Sun and Moon for the updated versions. But if you want more gameplay, I would suggest some of the other Pokemon games. Okay, we finally made it to the Nintendo Switch, and there are a lot of Pokemon games on the Nintendo Switch. Starting off with Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. I actually bought both copies of this game, and, and these games actually take the number one spot for the fastest games to get right into the gameplay of all Pokemon games in the series. With only nine minutes to get your first Pokemon, and very shortly after, 12 minutes to get your Pokeballs and start playing. And so in these games, you can choose between Hiragana or Kanji, and you can can play Japanese on any version of the game. The text in these games is so beautiful and crisp and clear, absolutely perfect here on the Nintendo Switch. Oh, this is just wonderful. It is no problem at all with this text. And now because it's on the Nintendo Switch, this is a very OCRable system. So if you're interested in checking out that technology, all you'd need to do is invest in a cheap capture card and you can now put your Switch directly to your PC and instantly have all the text highlightable. Very, very, very easy for a Japanese language learner to actually quickly see the dictionary definitions of all of the words. This makes the Nintendo Switch by far the recommended system if you're wanting to get into Pokemon games and learn Japanese with them. Now, these games are a little bit different from your traditional Pokemon experience as they're actually based on the Pokemon Go phenomenon that happened where everyone really got into Pokemon Go. I actually really enjoy these games and I think they're probably one of the prettiest looking Pokemon games ever made so far. I actually kind of wish they kept going with this and made Pokemon Gold and Silver in this style. I just wish they had battles optional for the Pokemon. The way this game works is a little bit different from other Pokemon games is when you come across a Pokemon, you don't need to battle it or weaken it before you catch it. You can just throw a Pokeball at it. That makes catching Pokemon really, really easy. You just throw a Pokeball with the right timing and you catch the Pokemon. And as you catch Pokemon, your Pokemon and your team just level up. So this does remove some of the challenge that's really fun about Pokemon, where you can kind of plan the ideal team and plan how you're going to take things down. Like, I think the replayability of most Pokemon games is really, really high because you can always do it a little bit differently. You can kind of plan a new strategy, do a little bit of a challenge, maybe try just using certain Pokemon. It's, it's really, really fun, but these games are a little bit different. I wouldn't say there's so much of a challenge as much as it's just a very enjoyable, easy introduction to Pokemon. There are still Pokemon battles as you can fight any of the trainers that you see along the way as well as gyms and things like the Elite Four and all that. However, because your Pokemon kind of just level up as you catch Pokemon, it's very easy to get over leveled and find the difficulty quite of a cakewalk. This game is also actually one of the easiest to shiny farm as this is the first game in the Pokemon series to actually have the Pokemon running around as you actually walk around, you can see them moving around and it's just so adorable. I, I really do love these games. I, I wish they just had the option to toggle fight a Pokemon. If they did that, I would say this is actually one of my favorite Pokemon games ever. Like I really like this experience. It's just a little bit easy and it's not quite the same Pokemon experience as all the other games. In terms of gameplay balance, it really is right into gameplay. However, there is also quite a bit of text to read as well. It's about the same amount as Heart Gold Soul Silver. And so even though it is straight into the gameplay, the fastest in any Pokemon game, there is still a lot of text as you go through the first hour. I find this a really good balance. Just purely from a language learning experience, this has got to be one of the best. You can still choose Hiragana or Kanji. It's so visual and lovely. And also you don't really have to worry too much about the gameplay, which for some people can be a little bit of a, oh, I got to grind, I got to level up. Ah. For other people that might be the actual whole point of it and having fun, but this game is really pleasant. 
and it's really, really fun. And in fact, this is probably the recommended game for someone who's never played Pokemon before and just want to get introduced to the series and kind of learn some Japanese. It's just such an easy, fun, happy experience. Now back to the real Pokemon games. Here we have Pokemon Sword and Shield. And so these games have access to both Hiragana and Kanji, and the Japanese is available no matter what region you buy the game, so you don't have to buy the Japanese version. And this game actually has the toggle that you can choose at any time. You can just go in the menu and you can choose whether to play in Hiragana or Kanji. So this is incredible. Very, very, very nice accessibility. And so at any time you can take a break from Kanji if you want and just play in Hiragana or you can go back. It's really nice being able to switch between the two. I played these games like crazy before I started this YouTube channel. In fact, I was at the Master League just grinding out my teams. I was really addicted to playing Pokemon. I was even in my spare time playing on Pokemon Showdown. I very much enjoyed these games. I know for a lot of people they can be a bit of a hit and miss, but personally I really liked these games and I'd actually prefer if Pokemon goes in this direction than Directions of Scarlet and Violet, at least from what I've experienced so far. I really like the way that the game still has a certain route. You can still kind of plan ahead battles and things. There's a great art style, great music, some of the best music in the Pokemon series, really good gameplay, great selection of Pokemon. It's a very, very fun game. However, there is a lot of story. And actually this game is the longest to get to the gameplay of all of the Pokemon games on this list. You get the introduction to the Pokemon League, you get to meet your kind of rival, you get to talk with your mum, you get introduced to some cute Pokemon, then you meet your rival's mum, you get introduced to the Pokemon champion, get to pick your starter Pokemon, have a quick battle and then head into the woods to meet a mysterious Pokemon. Then you head back from the forest to town, fight some Pokemon along the way, and then finally you get your Pokedex and the game begins. These games took 15 minutes to get your first Pokemon and 36 minutes to actually start with the Pokedex and Pokeballs and actually have kind of the real game begin. Now, it's a bit unfair if you just look at these metrics because this game does have a really interesting intro and you even get to meet a legendary and there's just really cool stuff happening and yeah, there's okay characters. I actually really just like the traditional Pokemon League vibes. You know, the adventure to become the very best Pokemon trainer. Some of the more recent games have kind of just forgotten about that whole quest to be the very best Pokemon trainer, but this game is full front and center all about the Pokemon League and you get introduced to the Pokemon champion and it's all kind of based around that. And, and I actually really like it. I really, really enjoy Pokemon Shield. It's one of my favorites in the series, even if there's quite a lot of text. I played this game completely in Japanese when I first played it and had an absolute ball. In terms of overall text in the first hour of the game, this game actually has the second highest amount of text in the first hour. So that does mean a little bit less gameplay, but it's balanced off with really interesting cutscene moments. So it actually is overall a very enjoyable experience. I freaking love this song right here. Just, oh, the music in this game is so great. I really like the Pokedex in these games. It's very nice and easy to read and also having it all on one big screen makes it really nice. So while this game does kind of have a similar flow to perhaps Pokemon Platinum, where there's quite a lot of dialogue before you actually get started really playing the game, I didn't mind it so much in this game because there's just such a nice variety of Pokemon. They're not all normal type Pokemon. And there's such a beautiful music, such beautiful things that happen. You get to see a legendary Pokemon. It's so fun. It's so colorful. I just really enjoyed this experience so much more than some of the other games, even though it has quite a lot of text. Okay, and so now we have the funkiest entry in this series. We have Brilliant diamond and shining pearl. Now, these are kind of remakes of the original diamond and pearl. I actually hadn't played these games yet, and this was the first time checking out the game and I bought it secondhand uh, just to check it out. So they're pretty much just a fresh paint job on the original Diamond and Pearl. Everything is almost exactly the same. It took almost exactly the same amount of time to get the Pokemon and to get started. 10 minutes, 30 minutes. The only downside is that they're based on the original Diamond and Pearl, not the enhanced Platinum version, which was such a better version of the game. In some ways, they're inferior to just playing Platinum on the DS. However, look, the graphics look okay. I was very harsh when I first saw this game announced. I was like, oh no, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> but after playing it for a bit, I will say it does feel a little bit janky at times. The animations are a little bit, mm, there's something a bit off. It is very much like a one-to-one -one graphical enhancement. That's what it is. The soundtrack is sometimes improved. It's pretty much one-to-one, -one, but just using different instruments. But 
I must say, I am kind of looking forward to playing more of this game. I actually would like to check out more of this game after playing the first hour. That being said though, a lot of the problems I had with Platinum's kind of boring first hour, still very much a problem here. But having already played Platinum myself, I know that Diamond and Pearl do get more fun in the future. So I'd really like to play more of this game, even if the first hour was... <laughs> certainly seems to be an acquired taste. This game does have both hiragana and kanji and they are toggleable, so at least it's very nice to have these games available on a modern system, with kanji being available. And of course you can access the Japanese no matter what version of the game you have, as the same with all of the Switch versions of the game. And as it is pretty much a one-to-one -one fresh paint of the original Diamond and Pearl, the score is also exactly the same with how the gameplay ratio is, as well as the difficulty of the text and how much there is. They are certainly not terrible games by any means, and I really do mean it. I do want to play more of this game. I've seen some cool stuff. I, I really want to see, like, just, I'd like to experience the game all over again and kind of see it with this new fresh paint, even if it is a bit janky at times. Apparently, there are even ways to get your Pokemon to follow behind you, just like in Heart Gold Soul Silver, as well as even some areas underground where you can see the Pokemon running around. So it's not necessarily a complete one-to-one -one graphical update does have a couple of new things, so that's really, really cool. Like, come on, walkable Pokemon, yay! Okay, now we're on the second to last game on this list, and we have Pokemon Legends Arceus. And this was just an incredible experience. I played this game when it first came out. I think I played this game from beginning to end in like a couple of sittings, just a couple of days in a row, just playing it over and over. It was so much fun. This is a really fresh take on the Pokemon series. It's almost a bit Zelda Breath of the Wild-ish where you kind of explore around the area, you have to dodge stuff and you actually have a health bar of your own and Pokemon can actually attack you. It's, it's really cool when you kind of stealth around and try and catch Pokemon. And it has some of those aspects where you can actually just catch Pokemon by throwing balls balls at them, but you can also battle them as well. It is quite a departure from the traditional Pokemon experience though, as there are no longer any kind of typical trainer battles of trainers hiding around corners and gyms that you have to progress through. And actually that's something I really like about Pokemon. I really like, even if it's not that hard, I really love having that challenge. I love being like, okay, I've got a plan for this area. I've got a kind of plan for this gym and what Pokemon do I want to use this run and stuff. Pokemon Arceus doesn't really have that. It's it's a really great first time game, but I'm not sure if I'd ever really go back and replay it. And this is actually the first game in the whole series where when you get your first Pokemon and you get your Pokedex and Pokeballs are actually at the exact same time. And this game takes 34 minutes to get actually started. However, huge good news, this is also the first Pokemon game to have Fudigana. This means small hiragana written on top of the kanji that make it easy for you to read. And it couldn't have come at a better time because Pokemon Arceus is actually the most difficult game in the entire series, without question. <laughs> I've run it through many different analyses and it always comes out as the most difficult game in the Pokemon series. Even if you're not trying to find difficult language, like for example in the customization menus, you can kind of change your hair color and stuff and it uses some really old kanji and some archaic kind of language here and there. Even without looking at that, it's still the most difficult Pokemon game in terms of language. So the Furigana is really appreciated. But be aware, Furigana does mess a bit with OCR programs. If you're trying to extract that text using an OCR program, this actually makes it more difficult. I was having a bit of an annoying time, even with certain filters that you can kind of change the Furigana and stuff, it was a bit annoying. I actually found the other games a much more pleasant experience. So you don't really need to do OCR as much with these games because they have the Furigana. So you can just, as you play, you don't even need a computer. You can just play on the Switch, sit on the couch and play Pokemon. And when you find a new word, well, you know how to read it. So you can just look it up in your dictionary. That's amazing, but it is slower than if you used OCR. Literally, OCR, all I have to do is go control, paste, highlight my mouse over that word. That's the speed it takes to look up anything. <laughs> Whereas this game, I would need to go, oh, okay, that's a word I don't know. Hmm, let's go in my phone maybe and type out that thing. And Oh, 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 this word? What does that mean? Oh, oh, Google says this. Oh, okay. It takes a little bit longer, right? Even if you have a dictionary on your phone or something, it does take longer, but the added bonus of Furigana is you can play it anywhere you want. Now I gotta unfortunately say the first hour of this game was not a pleasurable experience whatsoever. I have finished the whole game, so I know it's a really fun experience, but the first hour really, really took a long time. A lot of text, a lot of slow introduction, and I wasn't even able to catch any Pokemon legitimately in my Pokedex in the whole first hour. I was only able to catch the kind of tutorial area Pokemon. 
So I wasn't even able to see what the Pokedex was like in terms of readability. So I've had to use footage from my other save file to actually show you what the Pokedex looks like. So that's definitely a long time to get into things. So just be aware that Pokemon Legends Arceus is a very, very fun game, especially for the first time. Very different experience though. It may not have the replayability as other games, but it does have Fudigana, which makes it very accessible. And it is a real breath of fresh air that I very much look forward to seeing how they're gonna be doing the next Legends game because I really love how it's going and I kind of wish the next game on this list, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, was a little bit more like Legends Arceus. If Legends Arceus just had kind of, you know, roots and gyms and trainers and that kind of stuff, like a more traditional Pokemon feel, I'd say it's gotta be one of the most fun experiences ever, but without that, it makes the replayability very low. And because of the difficult language and a ton of text that isn't necessarily all that interesting, although that really just depends on your personal preference, that makes Pokemon Arceus a difficult game to recommend, even though it has Furigana. However, if you're really sold on the kind of concept of this game, then definitely feel free to check it out. It's a really fun time gameplay wise. Just perhaps there's a few things missing that you would expect in normal Pokemon games. So expect a very different experience, a kind of very much a first time new experience with Pokemon Arceus. Very, very fun though. And the final game on this list is Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. This game is available on the Nintendo Switch. This game does actually have Furigana, making it kind of the first proper Pokemon game that has Furigana. Although I can't really call it a proper Pokemon game as it is quite different to what the general experience is like. This game is a lot more open as you can kind of choose different ways of going. You don't really have to follow the same line as every player, even if you know there is a kind of level that you should kind of follow if you want to do everything in the order of level, but it's definitely a lot different from any Pokemon game we've played so far. It does take a little bit from Legends Arceus where you can kind of explore around, you can see the Pokemon running around and you can throw your Pokeball at them and fight them to a battle and catch them. And it was really fun. I, I had a lot of fun in the first hour playing this game. It took 30 minutes to get the game started. So you get to pick your Pokemon and you get the Pokedex at the same time. So that is a pretty long time, 30 minutes to get the game started, but it actually does a really good job of weaving in the story and the gameplay. There's a couple of kind of tutorial areas weaved in with the story. So as you're kind of, you know, reading and learning lots of Japanese, you also get to have a little bit of fun, catch some Pokemon, get some interesting cutscenes. You get an introduction to the game. However, it's very nice having the Furigana. You have a chat with your mum, get introduced to the professor, and you get to pick a starter Pokemon after having a little bit of an introduction walking together to the lighthouse. I really love the vibes of these games. I love being able to see the Pokemon run around and sometimes even interact and stuff. It's really cute. After choosing a Pokemon, you have a battle with your rival with a bunch more dialogue. And then you have a sort of tutorial teaching you how to actually play this game as it is different from other Pokemon games because you actually have the Pokemon running around and it's really cool to kind of see them running around and catch them. And it feels like you're actually kind of getting closer and closer to the dream of playing a kind of real life Pokemon game where Pokemon are living around in habitats. It's not quite there yet, but it really is quite a special experience. Experience. I'm really glad this section of the game exists as it kind of gives you a little bit of a break from all of that dialogue that you just had. There was quite a lot of dialogue and now you actually get to play the game. You actually get to battle, you actually get to catch Pokemon already, even though you haven't kind of officially started and kind of you haven't really opened up the game, you're still getting a taste of what's to come. Then you get introduced to some more characters as well as a legendary Pokemon and then finally you get to start the game. That being said though, for me, that was where my play actually ended in the first hour. So it took about the whole first hour to play at a natural speed to actually get to where the game then opens up and you get a bit more of a free choice where you go. It's a really nice balance. I was having a lot of fun, but I will say personally, I really do hope that the Pokemon series gets a little bit more streamlined in the approach. I love the roots. I love actually choosing this gym and going to this gym and kind of planning out my battle and planning out my team and how I'll challenge, I'll challenge this gym with this Pokemon. And maybe this time, instead of using Squirtle or Bulbasaur to take on the rock gym, I'll use Nidoran and learn double kick or something, you know, like you can kind of have really fun planning out your course with a more traditional game. I hope they return to that. Even if they do something funky, like level adjusted areas, like let's say you beat the first gym and now the other gyms level up. That way you can kind of have a bit more of a free choice. Hopefully they do something like that with the next Pokemon game coming. That being said though, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is really fun. I was having a lot of fun playing, just it's a very 
different experience. They've been trying some new things, as you can see as of late, uh, and it's very different from a traditional Pokemon game. But I do love what they tried to do with this game, and I'm very excited to see where they're going to take the series. Realistically, I've enjoyed pretty much all of these Pokemon games. The only ones, just some of them have a bit of a dry opening. But even this game I thoroughly enjoyed, and actually after I played the first hour, I played a whole bunch more. I think I sat down and played another six hours, and I managed to defeat the first kind of gym, or actually the second gym as well, the gym, and actually actually progressed a little bit more. So that was really fun. I had a lot of fun kind of exploring, and I did some broken stuff like, I managed to hack over a kind of cliff and managed to catch a Pokemon way higher than my level and that kind of screwed things up with the balance but it was fun because I was like oh cool I kept this Pokemon and then as I kept on exploring I found more Pokemon I was like oh I couldn't I couldn't help myself I couldn't stop from catching all these overpowered Pokemon um, that probably didn't help with the gameplay balance but this game has a little bit of jank to it, but it's pretty fun. And I really like the Pokedex in this game, as we actually have Furigana now in the Pokedex. And oh my god, that makes it so readable. Yes. Beautiful Pokedex. Fantastic. The only problem is, and it's a little bit of a gripe, is that when you immediately catch a Pokemon, there's all these windows kind of blocking the Pokedex. And that's so annoying because you're trying to focus on just the bit of text so you can read the Pokedex immediately after you catch the Pokemon, right? But it's just messy. The UI is not very well designed. It'd be much better actually just to close all of that and then open the Pokedex yourself and read it nice and pretty like this. It's just a personal gripe, but I wish they did a better job with uh, not making the UI why so cramped as soon as you catch a Pokemon. And I really look forward to what they can do in the future as they keep expanding and keep improving what they have here. As I said before, I think if they just get a little bit more full-fledged towns and kind of just a little bit more life to it, a little bit more real kind of location vibe to it, like a real map rather than just a kind of hub of different zones, I really think this format could get really good in the future and I have a lot of excitement to see where the Pokemon series goes. And of course, yay, Furigana makes it so readable and the fact they have it in the Pokedex is just incredible. So this game could be a highly recommended game if you're wanting to get into a beginner game because it's in fact the only Pokemon game with Furigana in both the game text as well as the Pokedex, which is huge. But whether or not the gameplay vibes with you or not is really kind of a personal thing. That being said, though, I was having a lot of fun in my first hour and then first six hours, and I do want to keep playing more and more, even if it's a little bit unbalanced and it's not quite the linear experience that I really want, or at least the feeling of progression that I really want. Whew, <laughs> that was a lot. Okay, so we've just gone through every single Pokemon having a look at exactly what's available. And so now let's kind of summarize all that information and so we can have a really nice, easy to look at analysis of what all the Pokemon games offer and perhaps picking one for you that you'd like to try out playing yourself in Japanese. So all of this information is available in a spreadsheet that I've linked below. So you can have a look at this at your own pace anytime you want. But as we can see here, we can see the time it takes to uh, catch Pokemon and the time to get started. A kind of small little general feeling of how much fun I was having, the text options that are available, as well as what version of the game has Japanese and what platforms the games are actually available on. So as you can see here, the games that get you into the gameplay as quick as possible. Here we have Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow, 15 minutes. Fire Red, Leaf and Green with 10 minutes. Black and White 2 with 14 minutes. And Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee with 12 minutes. So if you want to get into the gameplay as quick as possible, these four games are the ones you'd go for. And the longest games here being in red, such as Platinum, Sun and Moon, and then Sword and Shield, Brilliant Diamond, Arceus and Scarlet and Violet, there's a lot more story. So you can see that with the later games, they're really trying to make things a little bit more story heavy, a little bit more cinematic. And so it does make it a little bit longer to actually get into the gameplay. But as you saw, some of these games do a good job of weaving in text and gameplay and kind of introducing you to certain elements in a fun way, particularly something like Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, even though it's quite long. So now if we just have a quick comparison of all the text available in the Pokemon games, and you can see very clearly that the Game Boy games are incredibly similar. In fact, they really are just the same font and they are a little bit squishy. They're a little bit difficult to read. They're a little bit odds like that re is very weird that's not how you would normally write re. then you can see in the game boy advance things are getting a little bit clearer but it's still a little bit cartoony it's not quite computer font however i must say pokemon leaf green definitely seems to be much clearer than pokemon emerald so that's an interesting thing to observe and then next the nintendo ds much clearer font here with pokemon platinum and pokemon heart gold soul silver with identical text very very readable pokemon black and white spice things up a little bit by adding and kanji to the mix. So the hiragana and katakana is still just as readable as the previous games, but now we have 
sometimes challenging kanji, although very, very much appreciated, especially because you can switch them on or off. And then moving on to the Nintendo 3DS, and we can see they all look very clear. And all of the 3DS games seem to have identical font, and they're all very readable. Especially if you get the extra large edition of the 3DS with the top screen being even bigger. Personally, I would say from the DS onwards, you're not going to have too much of an issue with the text as it's pretty standard. However, the games before that on the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance might be a little bit challenging with Pokemon Black and White and Black and White 2 being the most challenging to read from the DS onwards, as the kanji can often get a bit squished on the DS screen and it's a little bit difficult to read at times. It often kind of bleeds together in shapes that you can't quite tell what the stroke order is. And then all of the Nintendo Switch games having absolutely beautiful text, very, very clean, very readable. If you're wanting the easiest to read experience as well as the highest OCRable experience with a capture card connected to your PC, the Nintendo Switch games are definitely the way to go. Now here we have an analysis done by jreadability.net. This is a website that analyzes the Japanese language in a text. Now this isn't gospel or anything like that, take this with a kind of grain of salt, but it does kind of connect with a lot of things that we saw in this video. We can clearly see that Pokemon Legends Arceus is the most difficult. We can see the original Red, Blue, Yellow as well as Emerald and the DS games having a lower level of difficulty. Feel free to pause the screen and have a look at which game actually has the least text in the first hour. Uh, we have sentence here for how many sentences there are, characters for how many individual characters there are in the first hour, and there's even a breakdown of the different difficulty of the language that appears where we have lower elementary, upper elementary, lower intermediate, upper intermediate, lower advanced, and upper advanced with surprisingly Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby having the least advanced language in the first hour of the game. Next here we have an actual ranked J readability score, so you can see at the top is the most difficult and the bottom is the easiest. So according to jreadability.net, Pokemon Sun and Moon is actually the easiest in terms of language. Even if it has a lot of text, the language itself is the easiest. That being said though, anything here with two is also very easy. So red, blue, yellow, ruby, sapphire, emerald, X and Y, sapphire, mega ruby, and let's go Pikachu and Eevee. Now I completely agree. I think they were all very easy language. I didn't have too much trouble with them at all. There was nothing really that I came across that I didn't know. And I do agree some of the games up in three, we can see are a little bit more difficult. Four is also a little bit more difficult, although I'm not sure I would put Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver and Gold and Silver Original uh, that high in difficulty. I may put maybe Sword and Shield a little bit higher personally, but this is what jreadability.net says. Next, I actually did a chat GPT analysis of the game scripts that I OCR'd automatically with Kamui OCR. And we can see that all of the games here say that the difficulty is about N3 to N2 level, except for Pokemon Arceus. Ding, ding, ding. That seems to be pretty accurate. And this one is at N2 to N1 level. Next, I then analyzed by hand <laughs> the kanji in the JLPT. I did this with my own spreadsheet, so this is not based on any algorithm or any AI. This is all something that I manually did with my own database of vocabulary and my own database of kanji. So this is really accurate in terms of the difficulty level of the games. Now, obviously any of the games that don't have kanji, that is any game before Pokemon Black, they can't be included in this difficulty list because there is no kanji. But as we can see in this list, very, very interestingly, the easiest is Pokemon X and Y, Alpha Sapphire, Omega Ruby, and Sun and Moon. So this agrees with the information that we got from J Readability as well. So we now have two sources saying those games are pretty easy. And again, we see the most difficult is Pokemon Legends Arceus. So it was definitely not just a vibe, we now have two sources saying that it is the most difficult. Now that information was based on every unique kanji, so each kanji only counts for one time, but this next list is based on the total amount of times that a kanji was visible. So if a kanji appeared three times, it'll be counted here in the list. That's why the numbers are a lot higher in this ranking. But again, we can see the same kind of information. This time, Pokemon X and Y and Alpha Sapphire Omega Ruby are the easiest, and again, Pokemon Legends Arceus is the most difficult. So we now have three sources saying the same thing. And just because I'm a sucker for punishment, I even analyzed manually <laughs> all of the kanji with the kanken. This is the Japanese ranking system for the kanji. Now I got all this information from the official Kanken website, so I got their exact lists. However, they didn't supply Kanken Ichi, the very highest level, but these are really rare kanji and they're probably not likely to appear in the game anyway. 
So as we can see from level 10 to level 2, I've analysed every single kanji that was used in these games in the first hour. And surprise, surprise, we have Pokemon X and Y and Pokemon Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby as the easiest games according to the Kanken, as well as Pokemon Legends Arceus being by far the most difficult. That score is way higher than all the others. And now finally, I've averaged all of the scores from both the Kanji JLPT individually, the Kanji JLPT total, as well as the Kanken, and here we have a final Kanji ranking list uh, for which games have the most difficult Kanji in them. And so as we can see, no surprise at all, Pokemon Legends Arceus has the most difficult Kanji out of all the Pokemon games, with Alpha Sapphire, Omega Ruby, and X and Y being the very, very easiest. So I think that's a pretty good analysis and it should hopefully give you a pretty good feel for what games are the most easiest, which ones are the most difficult, what are the positives and negatives of each individual game, and what language options are available for all of the games. So the question at the end of the day is, what is the best game for perhaps a beginner to play Japanese in in Pokemon? This one's a little bit tricky. So Alpha Sapphire, Omega Ruby, X and Y clearly seem to be the easiest. These are also available on the 3DS, so they're really accessible games to get. You, anyone can get them now, they're not going to be too crazy overpriced. In fact, I think I saw some at the, the shop for like 18 bucks, at least in Japan. <laughs> Japan's a little bit more cheaper perhaps, um, but still pretty accessible games. So I could definitely recommend those if you're willing to play on the 3DS. However, in terms of the current generation, I've just got to give it to Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. As we can see, it's just a little bit more difficult in terms of the kanji, but as we saw in this video, it is just so beginner friendly. It is so approachable. It is so easy a game to play. Even if you don't know Pokemon, even if you're not that interested in too much gameplay, you can still have fun and be exposed to all the Japanese. And it's so beautiful. I think I really do think it's probably the best looking as far as art style goes in the Pokemon series. I really like the music. I can't help but smile every time I play this game. And interestingly, because it doesn't have Furigana, it makes it really, really, really accurate with OCR. I had close to 99% accuracy for the OCR. So this is automatic, thanks to Kamui OCR, automatic, grabbing all the text. So my process, if I were to play this game, for example, if I was a beginner, really is as easy as just like, it's constantly capturing the text. So you can just paste it into like a spreadsheet or something and then highlight your mouse over it. That's it. You can just go through and just read it. So easy, so easy. That's way faster than a game with Furigana. So it's, I would probably say my recommended game in terms of the easiest game to play Japanese in. It's got the retro factor of having red and blue. The gameplay is not too hard. It's very comfy, very pretty, very nice vibes. Very, very OCRable. With Pokemon Scarlet and Violet perhaps being the next best if you just wanted to have a bit more of an open world experience, but still have that Furigana that makes it so nice to be able to read the game without any need for OCR whatsoever. You can just read it as you play. You'll never have a problem. You can read it. Even the Pokedex. That's amazing. I hope every Pokemon game from now on has Furigana both in the game and in the Pokedex. Please, Game Freak. That would be amazing. So what did you guys think? What game are you most interested in checking out yourself in the Pokemon franchise? There's so many games covering so many different platforms. And I just realized making this video like, man, Pokemon is awesome. <laughs> I really do love the series. It's still just so much fun. I, ever since I was a child, it was something I really enjoyed with Pokemon Blue. And it's, it's a franchise I really just enjoy seeing what they come up with next, seeing how they're evolving. Even if sometimes it's a bit of a hit and miss, I'm really looking forward to the future. I think it's a great series. It's a really fun series and it's a really enjoyable game to play as well for Japanese language learners. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks so much guys for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And if you really enjoyed this video and all the other educational videos we have on the channel, then consider coming joining us on the Game Gengo website or on Patreon and come join us on the Discord and say hi, come connect with me, even get help with your Japanese at any time you want. So thanks so much guys again for watching and as always, I'll see you all again next time. I'm gonna go play some Pokemon. I can't, I can't stop thinking about it. It was so difficult making this video, playing all of these games and it's like, ah, oh, I wanna play this one. Oh, I wanna play this one. Oh, I want to play this one. Ah, oh, so many choices. <laughs> really, there are no bad games. Like even the very worst one on this list, I still really want to play. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys have fun playing Pokemon in Japanese. See ya.